G and raising it over to the other side of the street to a second story, and that is a sharp, three-dimensionally higher than the rest of the notes, than the rest of the, yeah, the rest of the notes. The notes that touch each other really are, as you can see by back here, they're really touching each other, right? They're exactly cut with a bunch of band saws at one time. They're cutting at a certain angle. They all match in this angle right here. Okay, so we know that they're all together, but if you turn to the other side, there's been some glue tops that have made it a different color and also raised in the patterns of twos and threes on a keyboard. Those glue tops, or just those plastic molded pieces, those tops and plastic molded pieces are representing sharps, the sharp side of the street. The other side of the street are letters. So, E key songs. Okay, and we're like, E is a very important note to find on the piano. It happens to be the top half. If you want an 88 grand piano, a wooden piano, like a piano that's wood, that's made out of wood, that's like this, wooden pieces with levers and springs and hammers and strings, which is a really cool thing. If that was 88 keys, it would go all the way from the bottom A all the way up to E and stop, and that would be halfway of the piano. And once you hit E, then from F all the way up to that very top note of high, high, and high, super high, super duper high, very high, super duper high, C, the highest C on the piano, 88 key piano, that happens to be 44 keys. So the middle of the piano is between E and F. I start on E. Teaching everyone where is E. How do you teach where E? You have raised keys that are two. There's two of them. Here are three houses, yards of a neighborhood and they're called letters. Now these other notes, which are called sharp letters, their main distinction is they are raised off the plane. And to me, keyboard playing is a lot about touch and about feeling where those threes and skis, the three notes and the ski notes, are without even looking at the piano, by feeling them in between them and also feeling them, feeling the raisedness of their notes in between the two. So when you feel the, excuse me, in between the difference between the two raised notes and the three raised notes. So I have two, right, in this particular section that I'm talking about on the keyboard, two raised sharp letters, I call them, because they actually have a sharp sign next to them. One of them is D sharp. Okay, one of these two, I have two. I'm sorry, they're together. Think two. All right, so this little section of the keyboard we've talked about before is the ski section where there's two, like skis, raised on the keyboard and one of them happens to be called D sharp. Okay, okay, we got the two skis, which are the two raised notes. They happen to be the color black on this keyboard, but they can be colored anything. In fact, I'd like to see a keyboard that almost all of the notes were either all a light color, instead of so distinctly, um, differently colored, because it's the feel of the twos and the threes that's important, and it's the recognition that you can see the raisedness of those keys. Now, if you're playing on a tablet and everything's flat, and those keys are just filled in with a black slash there, well, then you know that is okay, I understand, and you have to have that distinction. But if you can have a real keyboard, is what I'm talking about, and this, going from this, which is a great piano, which costs thousands of dollars, to this, which costs $200, is really, really, uh, uh, is really, really uh, easy to do. Point of finger two, three, how are you doing? One, two, three. Swing your thumb under. Wank. You know why? Because you are on a three-dimensional height. You are higher. Now, it brings the point. You could never then 
really do that fast or great if you're playing on a tablet flat plane. Because you depend on the height. Keyboard players for centuries need the height of the sharp key in order to swing their thumb under. So you all that are trying to make us get away from that, you can't. You can at least make us buy something like an Amiga key version like this, where at least the still, the sharp, is higher on the sharp side, right side of the street. Remember the sharps are higher than the letters, A, B, C, D, F, G, G, F, U, D, C, B, A. Oh yeah, the sharps, oh yeah. Yep, what about that C sharp? That D sharp, that F sharp, that G sharp, that A sharp. What about that? That side versus the A, B, C, D, F, G, G, F, U, D, C, D, F, G, D, F, What is a distance? One half step is each touching key on a keyboard. I hold these five keys in front of you. These five keys are touching each other on the keyboard and the grand piano. Believe me, they are. These grand piano keys are representing half steps. If I hold two of them together, they are half step, especially and they only if they are touching each other. There's two ways to touch each other on the keyboard. One is to touch a sharp to a letter yard. A letter sharp to a letter yard. A letter yard sharp, excuse me, a letter, ah, a letter sharp yard to a letter yard. By touching each other uh, like this, they are called a half step. This is a half step. One half step. Letter sharp. Actually, I should always do this separately because remember the fingering. Ha, now you're saying, but Jim, you're just saying finger doesn't make any difference. The only fingering that you really have to know. Well, one of the fingers that you really have to know is not the fingerings of the major scales or it's exactly the same width of the yards. But you have to know distance. So I'm talking distance right here. From a sharp to a letter is a half step. It's a measurement on the keyboard. The keyboard then is made up of half steps. Wait, there's one weird place on the keyboard that there's no sharp touching right next to this like glove. Remember these are slanted a little bit with a big band saw that are cutting down a piece of wood. Really thick. A nice flat piece of wood. A huge piece of wood that stretches all the way to the camera right now. And imagine, I think it's about 68 band saws all going at the same time. And then that piece of wood goes through it. Eee! Cuts 60, well, it cuts 88 slabs of wood. And then they take plastic or ebony or, um, well, first then they paint. They paint on the wood. You see, this is painted. I don't want to break one of these off. You see, this is painted. They paint on the wood where the sharps are going to go. Because the sharps are so important to your sight. The sharps are something that makes something so fast. Because your eyesight is going through the patterns of the threes and the skis. Or, excuse me. The threes and the skis are all what you see. Three ski, three ski, three ski, three ski, three ski, three. Anyway, this is still more important than you think. T's and the threes and the spaces. B C B C D E F E F B C B C D E F E F. You're able to space those by quickly looking at the keyboard, and you can see where the spaces are. Just as you can easily, easily see see where the twos and threes are. So you have the A's, the uh, the spaces. right time, then you can just try again and again. I'm still trying. And also the threes and the skis. Here are the skis. Remember the skis? So, okay. 
Alright, let's see here. So is this, is this, it cuts off. So if I'm back here, and if I'm up here, and if I'm back here, and if I'm up here, it's all about the angle. Huh? So it's better to be here, because then you get to see me. So. Watch this. Watch it. Coming soon. Here we go. I gotta count to one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Six, I think. Now I'm playing. So you gotta see the keys, so I have to have it this low, this angle. But I gotta watch me. Because me, you can't see me, you just see my mouth move when I'm back here. Hi, this is my mouth moving back here. Hi, this is my mouth moving closer here. Wait, let's do the light test. If I'm pressing a note here, it's making a light like this. But also, do you look? Don't even see. Oh. Oh wait. Yep. Hi. Very close. Got to get to know the Studio E because we're in Studio E and I don't know Studio E. I have to get to know it better. Soon I'll know it better and then I'll be able to talk to you all better. Right now I'm just kind of moving around and it's weird because sometimes you know, if I'm back here too far, you only see like here. Very interesting, you know, kind of thing there. Do I raise it? Should I? Anyway, let's see if I can go prep fast enough. All right, what well, it says? I think it's it's this. Okay. Yeah, it is this. Hold on. Whoa. You could crawl all of these notes. You could crawl each one. By uh, figuring out what notes feel like when you're when you're going either sharp side of the street to natural to letter side of the street to sharp side of the street to letter side yes back and forth back and forth when you're in chromatic city and you're playing every single note every single note or every single possible house or yard or whatever that is on a street is what is in a city that's what you're playing every single one you um, get a feel for how your brain receives the fact that you are not, when you're playing both um, hands at the same time, your brain is thinking, am I in the threes zone or am I in the uh, ski zone? And I happen to be starting on D, right in the center of the skis, and I'm just walking out one note at a time away from each other, just feeling what it's like symmetrically to walk a space to a to a across the street sharp back on the other side of the street, back on the other side of the street, back to the other side of the street, and then the feel of when I do have, well I'll show you, so here we go, back to the other side of the street, right here, 
the together yards that you really don't cross the street. We stay on the same side of the street for that one little moment. Then we start crossing back and forth. G sharp. Then we reach it again. <laughs> then we come together. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, joke intent. Of possible ways to play <laughs> sorry, I'm really sorry. Uh, to feel the feel of the keyboard without really looking at it. Remember before I was saying, oh, you know, you could just feel the space, like pushing your fingers in between the threes and the skis and what it feels like to be in there. And what it feels like to be suspended on all the sharp letters. So now we have like two feels. And then you're thinking, well, also you have another feel, which is all the letters. You know, you go. Remember yesterday we were saying, oh, it's fine to use whatever finger you want to to do this with the keyboard? Okay? But it's not good to do that on the sharp side because of the glue, especially if it's an old piano. These are plastic tops that are just glued on a piece of wood. Notice that the wood has been painted black. So when they were manufacturing it and they had this big piece of wood that they cut into all these little slabs, they knew to put raised symmetrical plastic or ebony or uh, rosewood or whatever pieces on top of the wood. They could raise it because it's a three-dimensional instrument. Which